everyone and welcome to a new discussion uh, which we are going to have on supervised image classification techniques and uh, also we will be discussing about limitations of uh, supervised classification or overall classification techniques as well. As, uh, as we know that uh, we, we have already discussed this part that uh, there are two types of classification which we uh, do in remote sensing or over the remote sensing images. The first one is unsupervised classification which we have already discussed and uh, another one is the supervised classification. As also we have discussed but very briefly I will mention the purpose of classification is to create uh, uh, from a continuous uh, image data to create a map uh, that is better interpretable and easy to use by decision makers. So two techniques. One is unsupervised, that means uh, fully based on uh, computer, no, not much uh, human interventions are there and supervised classification that in each and every step human interventions are there and especially uh, for training sets, that is the most important thing here and uh, based on the training sets and then corresponding statistics and then choosing a appropriate classification technique we go for classification and finally also uh, we go for accuracy assessment which I will be uh, demonstrating to you in the uh, next uh, demonstration which we will have after this uh, discussion on class, uh, supervised classification. A, a supervised classification because uh, there are human interventions are there and therefore a priori knowledge uh, of that area is required and then only uh, supervised classification can be performed. If prior information about the area of which that uh, remote uh, satellite image belongs to, if that information is not available, uh, then uh, one should go for unsupervised classification rather than supervised classification. However, if uh, one is very good on image interpretation techniques, and uh, uh, having lot of experience of interpreting images then still one can go resort to supervised classification uh, because uh, while uh, selecting training sets uh, which are the basis of uh, uh, supervised classification if there is a confidence in selecting uh, uh, training sets in supervised classification then it is possible uh, that supervised classification can be achieved with good accuracy. So where uh, uh, you know uh, this, uh, uh, this thing one has to really remember that the prior knowledge is very much required. Uh, because uh, experience is there uh, of image interpretation then one can feel that uh, different classes which are present in the image or a scene uh, can have a conventional like for example conventional cover classes for example means uh, there might be forest, different type of forest uh, based on density we can say highly dense, uh, dense forest or open forest and uh, then we might be having agricultural land in that uh, scene and uh, we might be having water bodies, we might be having built up land, we might be having uh, bare grounds and uh, you know wasteland kind of thing. So all these uh, uh, can be put in the conventional cover classes. If a uh, image belongs to a, a hilly area, then one has to be very, very careful. If image belongs to a coastal area, then again different kind of care is required. However, always necessary, it is underlined here that the prior knowledge is required. If that is not there and uh, then experience, if that is not there, then there might be some other source of information. Uh, other map layers can also be used uh, for training the uh, or creating the training sets. So training sites or training sets are chosen for each of those classes uh, manually and this is done manually of course on uh, digital images which I will be just showing to you also and each training sites basically represents a class and uh, uh, th it is not necessary that uh, for each class only one training set will be collected that can be uh, many training sets for one class can be collected. For example, if I am seeing uh, 
and a lot of areas are having forest then in different areas I will collect uh, uh, training sets and then say that uh, uh, if uh, spectral characteristics of these training sets are same then classify as forest. So each training sites or class uh, results in a cloud of points which we will be seeing through a figure in n dimensional that is the measurement space uh, through, uh, uh, through three dimensional uh, scatter plots uh, these clouds can also be shown. And then this represents the variability of different uh, pixel uh, spectral characteristics or signatures in that class. So whatever the variation within that class I take, I took the example of forest. So whatever the variability in the spectral signatures of a forest class are there, they are grouped as one. Like for example here, what we are seeing is a uh, pre, this is a, a site. Uh, one image is there of belonging to a coastal area and uh, different training sets have been uh, selected here. And uh, if I focus on uh, say on the yellow areas, then uh, this is the, uh, you know, um, uh, one, uh, one part in the water body has been selected uh, where it says that sediment 2, sediment 2 that means might be some suspended or turbidity might be there. But if you come very close to the coastal areas, you are finding more sediments are there. So they, they are, the, the site is selected here is different that is sediment 1 and then also uh, you know the sea water has been selected where we do not see any signatures of uh, or evidence of uh, uh, sediments then it is the sea water it has been selected. So uh, likewise in the whole area uh, these things have been selected. For a, uh, 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 for a green area two training sites have been selected uh, which is a, a sunny T cell and uh, initially some names can be given but later on these names can be changed. It is for the training set. And uh, one more is the like here trees have been clearly identified and that so there are two training sets almost for each classes at least. There are two training sets for each classes are there. It is always a good practice uh, while doing a supervised classification that at least two or more training sets for each class must be selected within that image so that uh, the, we get a better variability about a spectral characteristics against each class. And once uh, uh, these uh, have been, uh, uh, that means the computer has been trained on these, the next step is uh, to assign each class to a spectral class and that appear or belongs to based on the uh, their pixel values uh, within the uh, you know because we will be performing on the uh, you know color uh, images or false color composites so on constituent bands. And uh, then there are clustering algorithms which are also used to which looks these uh, clouds of pixels in a n dimensional space and uh, then uh, the measurement uh, also is done depending on what kind of uh, algorithm one uses and uh, uh, the uh, pixels which are not falling in any of uh, these classes are, uh, are classified as uh, you know unclassified or giving no training uh, sets uh, there. For example, here a three dimensional, three bands have been used uh, in this uh, schematic and uh, what it is showing band 4, band 5 and band 6 and uh, these are the clusters which have been uh, used here. For example, uh, there might be clusters uh, for uh, one area, another cluster may be the wave surf area, another cluster is here and so on so forth. Now uh, which uh, which cluster uh, will be assigned, how this will be done and uh, that uh, we will see that uh, the algorithms based on the different algorithms which, which are used in the uh, measurement space uh, to, uh, to fix that uh, this cluster belongs to uh, a particular class. So algorithms which are used are the very, uh, that is minimum distance to mean classification. 
and so that uh, we we find that uh, you know the clustering how clustering is there if it is very open cluster then uh, this uh, minimum distance to mean is going to be large but if there are tight clusters then uh, this can be one of the options of among algorithms another algorithm can be a gaussian maximum light likelihood classification that uh, the probability it is based on the uh, probability and uh, then parallelly pied uh, classification is also there and uh, we will be seeing soon a figure through which we will try to understand all these three uh, well known classification techniques which are used in supervised classification and each uh, if we if we uh, put uh, if we use the same training set of uh, the same image but when we classify using these three different algorithms it is highly likely that we might be getting three different results but uh, uh, might be very close to for example the simplest method which is the first one that is the minimum distance to mean uh, is a, in which the theoretical center point of uh, the cluster or point cloud is plotted and based on the mean values of uh, that cluster an unknown point is assigned to the nearest of these and that point is then assigned the color uh, the cover class so likewise uh, now we will be seeing uh, uh, this uh, and uh, that in uh, two dimensional space rather than in three and uh, just for understanding and this is of course a schematic but all three methods which i have just mentioned have been used so this uh, here uh, the first one top left a uh, is showing different clusters of different classes and classes are shown here like uh, circles are corn and this uh, for for a hay and uh, other urban areas and wasteland now uh, when we go for the first uh, technique which is simple one the minimum distance to mean this is how minimum distance is uh, calculated a point is uh, the overall mean is first uh, here calculated and then it is found that which uh, which uh, cluster is having minimum distance from the mean and uh, then uh, a mean of each uh, Uh, and these clusters are and then they the, the clusters are assigned different classes and then you go for a uh, classification so if we if we look that the again that the minimum distance in which theoretical center point or point cloud is plotted so this is what the theor uh, theoretical center point of the clouds is plotted here and based on the mean values of these clusters an unknown point is assigned to the nearest of these and the point then assigned the cover class so this is how the mean distance minimum distance to mean classification or algorithm works when we go for uh, the second one uh, like uh, simplified or parallelified that uh, you know um, uh, rather than maximum likelihood the third one uh, we will take that one so in a simply parallelified what we are finding and uh, that a uh, different kind of uh, instead of uh, mean and uh, their boxes or demarcation is done on a uh, two dimensional space and uh, then whichever the pixels which are find uh, are getting within these uh, demarcations are assigned uh, to a one particular class and this algorithm uh, is called simple parallelepiped whereas in precise parallelepiped which you can see that the large clusters are fine but when we focus here we find that uh, like for uh, uh, this class example hay uh, here a uh, large area has been taken and therefore there are overlaps also so in order to avoid those overlaps uh, one uh, uh, like uh, these are the overlaps which you are seeing here and these overlaps and they will bring uh, uh, errors in our classification so in a precise one these overlaps are avoided and rather than just creating uh, rectangles or uh, you know squares to cover each class a very precise uh, boxes are created like this here as you can see here and likewise so this will give a more precise classification and that is why it is called precise classification same example here is also in this part 
which is stands for uh, waste water or maybe sorry uh, maybe the water uh, water uh, class so likewise this can be so different methods of spectral classes uh, can be represented here uh, in the bivariate scatter plot now the second option which was uh, uh, there the second algorithm which is the maximum likelihood it is based on the of course probability so the contours uh, uh, are drawn and as you go away from the center of the cluster uh, cluster the probability reduces of uh, getting those pixels in that particular class from the center so that the contours basically express the probability and uh, that any point uh, which belongs to a particular class if i take this example and uh, then and uh, then a, a class which is the basis of the maximum likelihood or method of classification so uh, the pixels which are having these values are having the highest possibility or probability of uh, being classified more accurately and as i go away from the center the probability reduces so there might be some like uh, on the border area uh, there might be some problem because and uh, these contours of other class might be also overlapping there it is not necessary that these contours have to be circular these contours can have electric electrical shape also and uh, which we say eq uh, probability contours also so likewise uh, classification can be done so there are you can say there are and uh, overall four classification techniques so for uh, which are, or algorithms which are used in supervised classification one is a minimum distance to mean then uh, you know the standard uh, uh, this uh, uh, parallelepiped classification then precise parallelepiped classification and the last one is the maximum likelihood which is based on the uh, uh, based on the probability now as earlier mentioned that as you can see that the different algorithms are choosing different classes based on certain methods some is using mean some is using uh, you know the the uh, boundaries to define different classes in some uh, this one like maximum likelihood is based on the probability and therefore it is inevitable that if uh, i put uh, all different algorithms on the same image with same training sets i am bound to have different results now there may be a question uh, that which is the best and uh, uh, that can only be decided based on once if we are having prior knowledge or after the classification uh, through all these techniques when we go for ground truthing and when we find that uh, a particular uh, algorithm has given the best result then for that particular area one can say that uh, this uh, classification technique or this uh, classification algorithm has been found good but uh, on the same image if the season is change a different date image is there different year date image is there you may get different results so in a one particular image uh, minimum say minimum maximum likelihood may be uh, more uh, may give more better results and in some other uh, date or season of the same area or maybe of the same sensor uh, if i use uh, uh, again the same way i may find that the minimum distance to mean uh, mdm is giving better results so uh, this is uh, some way is uh, highly uh, subjective and uh, the classification the best thing is to find uh, the accuracy part later prior information prior knowledge of that area will always help and will give the better results in the classification now i am going to show you examples of two classification or using two classifiers one is the first uh, option that is the minimum distance to mean which is there uh, which you can see here and uh, another one is uh, the probability based method uh, on Uh, this uh, classification that is maximum likelihood classification and what we find uh, that uh, uh, though number of classes have been uh, kept the same 
but if you if you start focusing on uh, uh, area wise or different areas you may find that uh, some are be getting better class better classified through one classification some classes and some are uh, getting better classified using another classes for example here i i find that uh, uh, here uh, in uh, it is getting a better maximum likelihood that uh, the maximum likelihood is giving matter more smooth uh, results and uh, though the training set uh, uh, training sets are the same which have been used for these two classification uh, algorithms so there is an, uh, the same image same training sets two different algorithms two different results that's the now which one is correct again as i have mentioned that it has to be checked accuracy assessment has to be done then only one can say that a particular classification for that particular area have been found uh, uh, better or more suitable so uh, this says as i have been mentioning uh, that uh, uh, this classification is very subjective secondly uh, so far i have not touched about the spatial resolution coarser the spatial resolution uh, better the results one may have because the differences in spectral characteristics uh, within training sets may not be uh, much as compared to high spatial resolution satellite images so more uh, you know the broader in in terms of spatial resolution and same in terms of spectral resolution as well that if you are having a broader uh, bands like in earlier uh, landsat mss or even landsat tm you may get uh, uh, you know very smooth results uh, rather than speckles in your image uh, in the classified map uh, but if you go for high resolution satellite images and uh, then the spectral characteristics for different training sets will vary very widely and therefore the output may not be as accurate as one would like to have it so uh, that means that uh, what we can say at this stage that these classification algorithms also depends on a spatial resolution as well as on the spectral uh, resolutions or characteristics so uh, course are these things are the better results one can obtain however but at that scale it might be good but when we go for high spatial resolution high spectral resolution uh, our expectations through classification is much more uh, and uh, therefore we we have to be very careful while choosing the training sets on high spatial resolution satellite images more care is required with the high spatial resolution as compared to co uh, relatively Uh, coarse resolution satellite images so this is what a lot of uh, uh, the accuracy of classification will depend on lot many things especially i am talking about supervised classification and uh, because uh, it it depends on the spatial resolution it depends on which bands you have chosen and then it depends on your uh, and the training sets how accurately how reliably you have collected these training sets and finally assessing uh, the accuracy part of your classification accuracy can be assessed through the statistical techniques and accuracy should be assessed if one would like to develop a highly reliable say land use map or forest cover map out of through these classification technique or a lithological map and then ground truthing is very much required and if uh, in the ground if it has been checked like in the image it has been classified as a dense veggie or dense forest but when we go in the field we find that uh, it is open forest not dense forest then again uh, the training sets have to be changed and classification uh, has to uh, uh, redone again so that it matches with the ground truth thing so uh, there are lot of subjectivities are there nonetheless the main purpose here is to reduce the number Uh, you know the is a continuous image uh, through these classification techniques we are reducing into certain categories and discretizing the whole continuous data set into just few classes 
So this brings to end of this brief discussion on supervised classification. Thank you very much. Thank you.